Hi guys, I'm Gary Asturias, and today we're going to be deciding who is the true five-star, five-star king on FIFA 23. For a long, long time, R9 has always been considered the god-tier end-game striker, the prime R9. In previous FIFA, sometimes obviously the prime icon moments, but he has always held the throne and his status as the number one striker in this game. With the recent foot birthday promo, we've now had a new kid on the block in Eusebio who has been given the five star skill move upgrade, making him R9's biggest competition we've pretty much ever seen on this game. So with them both being five star, five star, I think the first thing that crosses my mind is that R9 is probably still the more physical player and a part of me thinks Eusebio might feel a little bit more nimble in game, a little bit better on the left stick dribbling, that kind of a thing. The true only way to find out is to play some games with both of these cards and truly see who holds that number one striker spot on this game. To be transparent with you guys, I do not have the coins to afford these. So for the foot birthday Eusebio, I'll be playing with him in draft. For the prime on nine, I will try a mix of friendlies and rivals, depending on how many games I've got on the loan. But with both, I will play them completely off chem, so they're playing true to their base card stats, so there's no kind of bias with one getting a chem boost and then the other not. Well, she's got all of them. Really, really impressed with that AI of his already. The way he's holding runs to be in the space for the pass is exceptional already. That really stands out. Pass. Oh, he's megsed him. <laughs> That's nasty. I mean, the fact I've megsed him shows the guy has stood perfectly in the way and he's just gone right through him. How are his pens? Top bins, look at that. His run, the way he's held it. This card is broken, man. 13 minute hat trick. And he's gone. This card is this card is serious. Oh, he's got that new Kaka. That's another card I wouldn't mind trying. Ah, if I timed that, that's a goal. That's there where you save you. That's one nil. It, it's just one of these cards that makes it feel so easy to play. So easy. Look at that little drop off from Eusebio. That's lovely. Oh, he did that flip flop so fast. Good interplay there. There we go. Solid first half there from Eusebio. His link-up play is absolutely fantastic. The only thing I would say is that when he does have a defender on him, he does sometimes get out-muscled. And I don't necessarily expect him to be out-muscling defenders. I'm just, when I'm thinking about it in my head in comparison to R9, I'm thinking, okay, that is something R9 probably does have over him, that bit more of a physicality to the card. But... Anything you do with this card so far, it just seems like it does it perfectly. The weight of the passes, the position to receive a pass, the finishing ability, it's all there. It's all there. The speed of the skill moves as well it seems really snappy. Oh, oh. <laughs> nearly. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Oh, that touch and the finish was so snappy. <laughs> My word. Oh, good save for the goalie there. The angle wasn't really on, so I don't blame him there for not finishing that one. 
love his positioning. Look at that. Look at that. That guy was a good player as well, but it just felt like Eusebio gets a chance and it is just... I mean, that last finish. That last finish was vile. Is it on the... Let's have a look at this. He, I didn't even green this. He's just absolutely roofed that. But the goal he's jumped after it's gone in. Pretty cool setup. Oh, that's it. That's the one. And I've like totally mistimed it. But it's Eusebio, so it doesn't matter. It's going in anyway. And he's gone. I'm surprised. He was a good player. It was quite a stalemate until I kind of dropped the shoulder there with Eusebio and got through. Yeah, literally first chance of the game. Look, one shot. Man, it, it just feels so clinical. Well, I don't know if you guys ever have those games where it feels like you're creating chances, but you just never quite put them away. It's hitting the post. The goalie's making saves with a card like this. It just feels like the ultimate compensator. It gives you every benefit of the doubt. Okay, now it's time to try our nine. Now, because I used Eusebio in a draft and he was on zero chem because he was out of position, I have deliberately made my loan on nine um, out of position so he's also on no chem just so we get a fair comparison. It's not one's getting a full chem boost and benefit of a chemistry style and the other isn't. So I've deliberately put R9 out of position so he's also just playing purely to his base stats so we can get a true comparison of the two cards of a random team but never judge a book by its cover even though R9 is sort of seen as the more physical player instantly off the bat his left stick dribbling feels very very snappy I have to say let's try and uh, get that over his head oof that's a beautiful Traveller, that is. Especially considering I'm pretty sure he doesn't have the trait either. He hit that with a real nice kind of medium pace to it. So it has that dip. That was really, really nice. Okay. He seems to be drifting out wide a lot. Which is quite odd considering he's in the striker position. He really seems to come out to this right-hand side. Nice pass there from R9. Oh, round the back. Round the keeper. That's very, very nice. Is he gone? Okay. Really first solid game there from R9. Um, I know we didn't come up against a very strong team, so maybe it's not a too fair of a comparison yet, but he definitely feels positionally quite different to Eusebio. Eusebio was very central. And he kept dropping off into the pockets of space for me to play the ball to him. Whereas R9, he seems to drift out wide a lot. Um, I have got the same instructions in the players, so there's nothing there that should be causing that. So his AI naturally seems to like to play more towards the wing, opposed to the centre. But that's about the only thing I've noticed too different from them so far. Right, okay. So I'm going to do this next one in Rivals. I was just trying to do it in the friendlies, but the connections you get in those games are so bad, I just couldn't play. Um, so yeah, we're going to jump into Rivals with a no chem R9 and see how we get on. Oh, he's done that so clean. He has done that so clean. <laughs> My word. Oh, that's a nice inverted run. Oh, that's a good save. Oh, nab that. Let's see what we can do on the counter. Our nine's sitting quite deep. So what sort of run he makes, if any. There he goes. Right through the middle. Oh. It really feels like he pulls away on those runs. Very nice. Always <laughs> burst into that space around the keeper. There we go. 
You know what? It's funny because obviously in real life, Arnine's thing was going around the goalkeeper, and for some reason, it is super easy with him in this game. I have to say, feels like you can get around the goalie really consistently, even if the goalkeeper's like really tight to your feet. Oh, he needs to roof that one as well. Again, like you say, being really, really consistent on goal. Really consistent. Oh, that's lovely from R9. Oh, he saved it. This guy stopped playing midway through the first half. So I'm just having to save this one out and then we'll crack into another game. We're probably going to do a couple more with R9 just because the first game ended very quickly and the second game, the guy literally stopped playing halfway through the first half. So we've not really got to try much of him yet. So we'll do a couple more and see how he gets on. Really struggling to get going against this guy. He's defending really compact at the back. Let's try and pull R9 into the action a bit more. That's really good work from R9 there. There we go. That's one back. Nice feeding by R9. Oh, it's just wide. Oh, that's the R9 jam right there. <laughs> he blocked that really well. It's still gone in. That's nice. R9, there it is. Top bins, 3-2, let's go. Yeah, we're in his head there, I think. <laughs> he didn't like the fact he lost the 2-0 lead. Well, we'll do this last game with R9. So we will have technically done four games with him, but the first game and second ended so prematurely. It's worth doing one more just so he gets kind of an equal amount of game time to Eusebio, who I played three full games with. <laughs> he doesn't want to commit, does he? Oh, good save. One. Oh, he's bullied him there. Green it. Oh, there was no doubt on that shot, was there? Please don't leave. He's left. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I think the fact that people see a lone R9 really does their head in, especially once you score with them. They're like, yeah, he's basically cheating. Let's go. <laughs> Having played now with both of these cards, I can see why they have the astronomical price tag of 9 million coins each. So it really is a case of picking the one you prefer, unless you've got 20 mil just sitting in the bank. For me, starting with Eusebio, positionally, he was absolutely phenomenal even when it came to just like the interplay when we were building up trying to get towards the opponent's final third he was always just in the right spot to receive the ball it never felt like the opponent was able to cut out the passing lane to him he was always available speaking of his positioning not only was he always in a spot to receive the ball but whenever he was making like an offensive run to try and get in behind the opponent's defense he would never commit past the defender if I hadn't passed it he would always hold his run so he was always there as an option if I'd left the pass too late which I loved because I'm not someone that necessarily plays super direct and aims for that getting behind ball all the time I often will work the ball a bit more and just want to play it into my strikers so with him holding his runs like that played into the way I play the game perfectly like it was super super nice I haven't used another card that actually has that kind of AI on the attack that was absolutely awesome. Eusebio, finishing wise, was just sublime. Like, honestly sublime. He's renowned as being one of, if not the best, kind of shooting card in the game anyway. But this version, the five-star weak foot, five-star skill moves to get himself into more shooting positions, he honestly hit the ball with such venom, such placement, regardless of whether I put him in a meta angle or not, regardless of whether I green the shots or not, he was just... Probably, I would have to say, the most consistent finisher I've used this year, 100%.
with R9. His attacking AI was noticeably different to Eusebio's. I didn't feel like he was always open to receive a pass. It definitely felt like he was drifting out wide a lot more, wanting to receive the ball more as a winger, which I didn't dislike actually, because what it enabled me to do was utilize his five-star skills to work into the box with him and he was superb in terms of actually working the ball with skill moves out wide into the box because he's got that glitchiness and he does have such great dribbling for someone that is quite a physical striker i was able to work myself into great positions from wide positions and play in a ball into like my cruyff or my kaka who are sitting in those spaces inside the box and r9 was able to feed them in every time R9, particularly with his offensive runs, is definitely a lot more direct than Eusebio. He really commits to them. So whereas Eusebio was kind of holding his run if he was going to be in an offside position, R9 is a full committed run into the attack. So with R9, if you don't play him in before he's offside, he does kind of commit past the defence and you kind of have to wait for him to retreat. But if you are able to feed him in and time those through balls, the... Um, like the animation of him when he runs with the ball he just absolutely pulls away he kind of has that weird glitchy animation when he runs through like lengthy strikers do except he's not lengthy so you've got like a max pace max dribbling striker that's physical and has that feel of a lengthy running style where they just really pull away he was really really dangerous with his runs really dangerous there is absolutely no doubt that these are the two best strikers in the game for me. They are absolutely obscene. Like, I prefer them even over the likes of Team of the Year and Bappe. These two, for me, are just such a dream to play with. However, we did say this was Eusebio versus R9, who is the number one pound-for-pound -pound king as the striker, the endgame meta striker for this game. And for me, personally, I'd have both. <laughs> I'm not going to cop out and say both. For me, Eusebio takes it. His positioning, his constant availability to receive the ball, always holding those runs if he's about to be offside, it, for me it was just invaluable because it enabled me to get more chances with him and he literally just doesn't miss when he gets them. R9, I would say, would be the better option if you play super direct. If you're someone that likes to play like Route 1 football, just literally get it straight up to the striker, try and get them in behind as soon as possible, then R9 is your guy because he is super direct. But for me, someone who likes to build up the play just that little bit more slowly and really work and create space with skill moves and passing, Eusebio takes it. Speaking to those two kind of styles of striker that they play as, I would recommend the Hawk chemistry style for Ronaldo purely to maximise that shooting, maximise the pace and just get his physicals up a little bit more because I feel like that will really lend to the way he makes runs, just making that a little bit more powerful. With Eusebio, I personally would recommend, I mean Hawk looks like an obvious option, but I would actually recommend the Marksman chemistry style purely because that will get him onto the controlled acceleration type, which I feel will be even more meta with the way this card's formatted. It just means on those longer runs, he doesn't kind of slow down, which he does with the explosive running style. So Marksman, I would recommend for you Sabio and Hawk for R9. Thank you for watching the video today, guys. Let me know down below who you think is the better striker out of this brand new footbirth of Eusebio and Prime R9. For me, Eusebio takes it, but I'm sure a lot of you guys would opt for R9 as well. If you think there's a different striker in the game that is better than these two, let me know who you think it is. Thanks for sticking with me to the end on this one, guys. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn your bell on. Take care, guys.